Hello everybody and welcome to the Godot speedrun part 2. Before we start guys, I want to show you that I created an itch.io for all the assets, so if you want an easy way to download it, go here. But of course, you could also find them on GitHub. Where we left off last time, we did the player controller, tile collisions, death. So, right off the bat, I want to show you, if you go to the debug menu, and you can activate visible collision shapes, and that way I could see them here while we run the game, you can see the area as well. Cool. Um, this is not the best way of doing it because uh, if I'll show you if I add a rigid body, any body that collides with this area will trigger a reset of the level. We don't want that. So I will demonstrate when we add the collision, we're going to come in here and add a shape. We don't need a sprite because we have visible collision shapes. Also, you can see this is the rigid body. Um, one thing that's bad is if I just click the child, I can grab it and leave the parent behind. Uh, we don't want that. So in order to thwart this, if you click the parent, you can go over here and group selected nodes. That way I can't accidentally grab the child. Okay, so if we run the game, we'll see that the rigid body is colliding with it and it's resetting the level. We don't want that. So there's two ways to handle this. We could do it the group method, which I'll show right now. You click on the character body 2D, our player, come here next to the inspector, there's nodes, groups, and we're gonna add our player to the player group. Then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say, if the body is in group player, you have to spell it exactly the same way as you wrote the group, so make sure that's good. And then when we run the level, it no longer is triggered by that. Great. Let's undo all of this and I'll show you the second way. But first we have to come in here to our project settings and go to our 2D physics. And on layer two, we're going to add a player layer. Now we're going to go into our player, go into the inspector, go to collision, and we're going to add our player to the player layer. So we are saying that our player, which is on layer two, collides with everything on layer one. So that's the mask. It tells you what it collides with and the layer is used to identify the current object. So we're going to go into our area, which is in layer one, and we're going to say it only collides with things on <clears throat> the player layer, uh, mask two. So even though we got rid of that group code, it still does not activate and it is all good. Cool. I'm going to delete this. Control X to delete. Great. Now we're going to make these terrains look a bit better. So as you can see, I added some files, uh, a new tile set, uh, sounds and a sprite sheet. So we're going to come in here and we're going to add our new tile set. Press yes. And I'll show you a fast way of doing the collisions. We already added the physics layer here. We're going to go into the paint property and go to the physics layer and just draw in it in like that. Cool. Now we'll go to the tile set. We want to make a terrain set, add an element, expand the terrain, add another element, come in here. I'm going to change the color. You don't really have to. I'm changing it to white. So let's save the scene, open paint, come in here, terrains, terrain set zero. That corresponds to that. And then inside, terrain set zero. We're going to color all of these in and then copy the pattern I show here. If you cannot draw the pattern, there's a little glitch. You need to reset the editor, but it should be good. If you can draw it, you're good. Copy this. So look, there is actually one square that we've left and around everything here. That's how we're doing it. So now we're going to go into the tile, tile map, click terrains, click it, right click to erase the old tiles. And now that we made the terrains, we can do these very pretty shapes very easily. Make sure that the collisions are working. Let's go to the debug, uncheck this, and test it out again. It seems to be working. Great. Alrighty, now let's add some animations. So we're going to come into our player. In the sprite, we're going to add our sprite sheet. Go to animation. There are eight horizontal frames we're going to add an animation player and our first animation is going to be the run animation we're going to come in here expand it and we want to animate the frame property because the frame is what cycles the animation and you could see when we have the animation tab open we get these keyframe icons if i switch tabs they disappear so if you don't see those you need to make sure you have this expanded the run animation is going to be point 
eight. We want it to loop, so we'll click that. If you want to expand this to see it better, you do that here. And press the key property, uncheck this, create. We're going to go out two. We want frame one. Go out two. Frame two. And then three. Run it. That looks good. Let's go to the next one. Idle. This is going to be 0.6 seconds. We want it to loop. We want it to play on auto load. So when we start the game, it'll play this one. Come here, go to four, click, 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 and put them out like that. Save. Last one is jump. It's just going to be 0.1 seconds. Uh, we don't want it to loop. And we do the last one, which is frame seven. Click, put it in. There we go. Come in here. And I have the code for this here. Just gonna pop that in right there. I will go over it, but first we need access to the animation player and the sprite 2D. So in order to get access to those nodes in here, we want to control to click both of them, drag it in, hold down control before you place it. And you could, okay, that was a fail. <laughs> Let me make some more room. Hold down control, drop it in. You could see that it's using this on ready var. Um, we've used the physics process, but there's another function. It's called ready. So this runs uh, the first when a scene is played. So we could see when I run the script, it runs ready. So this on ready is, is it loads these variables before this function runs, which is very important when you're loading nodes. So you always have to use unready. If I take this off, it'll give me an error because you always need that. And this dollar symbol is how you get access to the nodes. Okay, let's delete that. We'll go over this code. So if the velocity does not equal zero, so that means if we're moving left or right and we're on the floor, we want to play the run animation that we made, make sure these corresponds to what you named them in the animation player. Else, we want idle. If we're not on the floor, we want to play the jump animation. And this is for flipping our character left and right, depending. If we're going to the right, flip H equals zero. We'll come in here, click the sprite node, go to offset. Flip H is false when we're going to the right. And when we're going to the left, it's true. And that's what this corresponds to. Let's test it out. Our character is so tiny. <laughs> if you come in here, you see that there was two changes done in the transform. We changed the scale. Let's reset it back to one. Come back here. We need to fix the collision. Let's go here. Let's change the frame. That. That looks good. Come back here and let's test it out. It's looking good. Yes. Cool. The camera is being very annoying. So let's fix the camera while we're at it. I want the zoom to be three. I will do three like that. And if we come here to the editor, we have these uh, limits. So we're going to mess with the drag margin. And I will explain what that is. First of all, we want to check these two. Alrighty, so what the drag margin is, is the camera is not going to move if we're within these drag margins. If you don't see the, this blue square, it's because you didn't activate it in the editor. And what we want is we want the top to be bigger so that when we jump, the camera doesn't move as much and because it makes me nauseous. I don't know. So edit these to your desired properties and you could see it's now moving less and it feels a lot better. Cool. I want to edit the environment as well. So let's go to the project settings, come here, go to the environment, and let's put a nice happy blue. Starting to come together to look good. Let's add some sound effects. So in our character body, let's add an audio stream player and we'll call this jump sound. Drag it in here. You could change the volume up in here if that's not to your liking. Come in here, drag it in, hold down control. Let's try it again. 
click here. And when we're doing the jump velocity, let's play this sound effect. Cool. Our game is almost done. Let's do a way to switch to the next level. Come here. We're going to add another area and we'll name this death area. We'll name this next level. We'll put a collision. Let's add the shape circle. Let's glue them together with this. Drag it over. Cool. Come over here, click level one, control D to duplicate. Okay, great. Open it up. This is level two. Let's change the name over here and let's go to the tile map. Come here, eraser, rectangle. Oh, we actually need to go to the terrains. If it's not erasing, make sure you have the terrain selected. Let's undo the eraser and let's make something so that it looks different. So now we have a level two. The next level will send a signal when the body enters. We want to do this, but we want to go to level two. And let's make sure that this mask only goes to our player. Let's test it out. And there you go. Your game is almost complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can also catch me on Twitch or Twitter. And if you go to the Patreon, there's tiers with source code and a demo to the current game I'm making. And there's a lot of other goodies. So check that out if you want. Alrighty, guys. Take care. Bye.